G'day everyone, Chris Fawcett from the Headache and Pain Management Centre here and uh, today I'm actually sitting in uh, my practice manager's chair um, today. Basically my reception and practice manager are away. That's relevant for you uh, in just a second. I'll tell you how that's going to help you out um, in just a minute. But basically today what we're talking about is the most common but underreported cause of headache and migraine conditions. So I've uh, been looking forward to sharing this with you. Um, what I'd just like to point out just from the outset is that yes, I'm actually on reception this week. Uh, my practice manager and receptionist have both been unfortunately called out for the week, so I'm left on the reception desk. What that means is that I'm the one taking the calls, and what that means for you is that we've actually got a little bit of time um, to have a chat to you personally. So it won't be my receptionist, it won't be one of my staff, it'll actually be me on the desk. So uh, from the get-go, if you would like me to contact you um, at any time this week, I'd like you to uh, type in below, contact me, and what I'll do is I'll arrange a time over Facebook Messenger uh, to have a chat to you. Hey, basically what we'd like to do today is talk about the uh, most common and underreported cause of migraine headache. So basically what happens um, when you get a migraine headache is that you go to the GP, you go to your neurologist, um, your, your medical professionals, and basically what they'll do is they'll look for the cause, okay? But unfortunately they're not looking for the cause, they're looking for what we call triggers. Hi there, nice to meet you there, cool. Um, basically what happens is that they look at triggers rather than the causes. So quite often what you'll see is uh, they'll try to identify food triggers. So like, um, for example, some people uh, can't eat onions or bananas, uh, soft cheeses, dark chocolates. Um, others might be red or white wine, for example. Uh, they might blame it on stress, so you need to just uh, chill out a bit more, um, which can be a little bit hard when you've got uh, kids running around or you've got a high pressure job. Um, good luck with that. And uh, the third one that always seems to get the blame when it doesn't really need to is uh, hormones. So basically when um, you get the migraines that sort of link in around your hormonal cycle. It's really, really easy to blame the hormones, but it might not necessarily be the case, especially these people who are still getting migraines and headaches um, with their hormonal cycle and they're taking medication and nothing's working. So I suppose what I'd like to do is to uh, let you know today about how a headache happens and what the cause of it can be and what we can do to fix it. So I suppose when we're talking about um, the most underreported cause of headache and migraine, we're talking about the top of the neck, so the top three joints of the neck. Now the reason for this is because all of the signals that come into your brain, so the ones that come from um, the blood vessels inside your brain, so if you're exercising or if there's hormonal changes which can change kind of the, um, the, the blood pressure within your blood vessels, um, basically all the signals that come from all of your uh, things that drive you automatically without thinking about it, so what we call your autonomic nervous system, they all pass through the same area of your brain as the top of your neck. Now that part of your brain is actually the part of your brain which instructs the top of your brain, okay, because we've got different parts of our brain, so the bottom part of your brain instru instructs the top of the brain to act and protect you and therefore give you a headache. So what happens is that the uh, if you have a sensitization of that part of the bottom of your brain, so if there's something that's not quite right, your brain's not liking it too much, what can happen is that things that don't normally give you a headache, like your hormones or stress or um, food triggers, so what I'm saying is things that don't give other people headache, start to give you a headache. Now what can trigger that sensitization off is the top of the neck. So if there's a problem with the top of your neck, so like a stiff joint and it's typically at around C23, or if there's an issue, for example, with uh, the top left-hand side of your neck, uh, you'll get a left-hand side uh, headache. What can happen is that uh, those triggers, so the hormones, the stress, the foods, the wines, and so on, can cause a headache when, in reality, it's actually the neck that's starting it all off. And the way to treat that is actually to have a look at your neck, make sure that your neck is moving properly, and if it's not, we get the neck moving so that you can actually have your uh, triggers again. So uh, your red wines, you can uh, have your lack of sleep, um, you can be a little bit, uh, a little bit stressed, um, or you can have your uh, hormonal sort of fluctuations that you normally have, uh, but without the pain and agony of having a uh, migraine headache that knocks you out for a few days. So um, that's basically all I wanted to get across today is that you can have all sorts of different uh, triggers that come through your system, um, but there's really only the one cause. And the most common cause is a stiffness at the top of the neck, 
which needs to be treated with good, solid manual therapy and some education exercises to get that right. Um, I hope that's actually um, helped you out. So the top of the neck is a very common cause of headache and migraine. More like 80 to 85% of the time it is. And um, it's really important that you get your neck checked by someone who knows uh, what they're doing when they're doing, uh, when they are checking your neck so they don't make things worse or stir things up. Um, excellent. So just a reminder as well that this week I am on the reception desk uh, for the next few days. So when I'm not with patients, I'll be on the desk. Uh, if you would like to uh, get in touch with me this week, what we'd like to do is to get your uh, in the comments below. And basically what I'd like you to write is contact me so I can get in touch with you on Facebook Messenger and organise a time that we can catch up for a 10 minute chat. Uh, as always, like, comment, share if you think uh, anyone, uh, tag below anyone who you might think uh, might get something out of this video. And uh, yeah, it's wonderful to, to see you all. All, uh, yeah, there you are, <laughs> g'day. Um, we can uh, then touch base and get your headaches rocking and rolling. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you again same time next week, 11.30 Tuesday with something else. Keep an eye out on Facebook um, and uh, like, share, comment. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.